All right, hello everyone. Dave McDonald here. Once again, Quarantunes number 12. Not sure how many days it's been, but it's been a lot of fun spending time with you drawing. I hope you're enjoying these um, drawing cartoons with Dave McDonald videos. Hey, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about pens and markers. <clears throat> I've had some uh, interest from some viewers and they're asking me what kinds of pens and markers I'm using. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between two types of pens that I use. Now you know that I always first draw my characters basically in pencil, sometimes starting off with simple shapes, and then I ink over the top of them or trace over my, um, my drawing. But just to, I wanted to share with you two different types of markers that I use. Lorelei has been watching all my videos. Hey Lorelei, hope you're doing well today. She's an awesome artist and she's concerned about the type of marker that she uses. She's looking, she's looking for a certain type of a look. And you know us artists, we'll, we'll have to play around and try different pens and, and see what we like, right? And there's a lot of different styles of pens and you don't have to spend a lot of money. Now, a technical pen is a uniform line width. That basically just means it's like a ballpoint pen. No matter how hard you press the pen, and this is a ballpoint pen, just a regular pen that you would use in school or a teacher might use, and it's blue ink, and it looks like it's running out. But as you can see, it's just one line width, right? Okay, so here's a technical pen. Um, just has, again, no matter how hard you press it, it's just one line width. And these are great for doing things like lettering, like when you're lettering your comics. Hi there. Makes the letters very easy to read. Uniform width. Right? Hi there. Different one. Different companies make them, and they come in different widths. Here's a number five, so hi there. Looks about the same as that other one that I just used. Hi there. Again, a number five. And then the larger one is a number eight. Might be a little, yeah, it's a little thicker. Hi there. So it depends on what you're looking for in your drawing. Okay, but again, very good for lettering and technical details that are small. Maybe some cross hatching would be great for these pens, right? Cross hatching. All right, so that's just a uniform line width. Now, the other thing you'll see me using, they're called brush markers. <clears throat> and they're called brush markers because they kind of give you the look of a paintbrush without using a paintbrush. So here's a little paintbrush. And I know you've painted before, but if you look real close, when I push that paintbrush down on the paper, do you see what it's doing to the bristles? It's making them spread out. So if you had paint or ink on this pen and you pressed hard, you'd get a real thick line, right? So that's what these brush markers do, all right? Brush markers. So if you draw a line and you press down very lightly, I can get very fine, right? But if I start to press harder like a paintbrush, I can make that line thicker and then gradually let up on the pressure and bring it back to fine. And that's what these pens can do for you. And it gives some character or interest to your lines. And I like to use these for drawing characters and backgrounds. This is a, an extra fine uh, brush marker. This tip, it's the same brand, but the tip is just fine. So it's a little larger. So maybe you'll see the difference if I press down harder, you'll get even, yeah, that's a little thicker. Okay. And then the big daddy, <laughs> look at this. See the size of the tip on this? That's all bristles like a paintbrush. So if I were to use this one, maybe a big detail that's bold in the foreground, 
I could still get that very fine line, but boy, watch this when I press down harder. And those bristles spread out. See that? Now this is harder to control and it does feel like a paintbrush. So it's a little, it kind of, it can kind of jump around on you a little bit. So it does take some practice using. And you can see the ink is kind of, I don't know if it's drying out, but they are refillable. You can just buy this little thing here and put the ink cartridges in the back. So if you need some big thick lines, you would use something like this. And so in a drawing, I've already penciled out a drawing for you here, tree, sign, a couple clouds. Now I wouldn't draw clouds like that in the sky together, same size, normally, but I thought I'd show you the difference. Let's see, if I were to draw this cloud with a technical pen, I'll show you the difference. Watch, so technical pen, go around the cloud. All right, so there's a technical pen. But I like to use, when I draw my clouds, I like to use these brush markers. And it gives you, again, it gives you a little bit of character in the lines themselves. Press down a little bit harder at the top. So. Again, depending on how much you press down, the thickness will, will change, okay? So you can see the difference between these two clouds. This one just pops out a little bit more, has a little more dimension to it, which I like. You can go back in, and you could get the same effect with your technical pen if you just wanted to take a little extra time and go in, thicken that line like this, and then fill it in, and it will give you the same effect as a brush marker without having a brush marker. Again, you're just adding line weight or thickness to the lines. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Let's see if I have time. So I'll real quickly maybe see if I were drawing this for a comic, I would use this brush marker for my tree. Okay, see how the lines are a little thicker in the middle? And then as we go down the side of the tree, I like to just vary that. Vary the thickness of that line. Just adds more interest, doesn't it? And then inside these little, just to show kind of the, maybe the bark, I would keep those lines nice and thin. And then maybe add some of these little, where the, might be some shadows. Where the wood takes a little turn. At the bottom, what I like to do sometimes, there's grass growing. So rather than draw the bottom of that root, I'll just draw in some grass. Maybe a flower back here, right? Flower over here. Horizon line. You could do this with a technical pen because it doesn't matter if it's it's way in the background. I'm trying to draw it evenly. And then, let's see, for these things in the background for the mountains, I might use my brush marker again. Vary that line weight. And definitely on the little snow cap, a little heavier at the bottom of the snow, where there might be some shadow beneath that snow. Right? And then for the tree line, way in the distance, I would use one of these, just one of these uh, technical pens. And I 
press very lightly and I just kind of wiggle and move right to left or left to right and I'm just giving a tree line again comics is about simplification we're not drawing exactly every single detail but your viewer will get the impression that they're seeing a tree line way in the background just by drawing this squiggly line like that see that that's pretty cool and then yeah these a sign in the front would definitely have um i would do my i probably would use this thicker one where is it that number eight a little thicker for the lettering so that the letters are uniform, they're easy to read. Pine Sap National Forest. Hey, have you ever been there? I made it up, so if you've been there, I'd like to hear what it's like. <laughs> Is it like I draw it? Is this what it looks like? Forest. And I could draw that little tree with my technical pen, color that in. So I might use my, my marker, my brush marker, to do the actual wood of the sign. Sometimes what I like to do is make the wood look kind of aged or broken. So you can easily do that with your brush marker make it heavier on the bottom make that bottom line heavier again there's weight there and there's shadow bring our posts down and at the bottom it's kind of sticking out of some grass probably And a little shadow beneath the sign, as if it's, again, it's got some weight, so let's give it some dimension, maybe draw the boards here in the background. Some lines around there. Pine Sap National Forest. So that is we didn't draw a character today, but I did want to share with you because again, I've had a lot of questions about the pens and the markers that I use. Technical pens and brush markers, right? I'm not here to sell you any anything really. This is not, these are some of the brands that I use. I haven't talked about the brands, but when you're shopping for pens, shop for either brush markers or a technical pen. And you'll be, you'll see all different styles and and price ranges of, of these pens that you can buy. All right, just wanted to share that with you today. How'd you do today? Did you draw the tree lines today? Did you draw the cloud a couple different times with your markers? Did you get some dimension? Again, I showed you how to do the dimension with just a regular pen. You don't need a brush marker to do that, All right? You get the same effect with a regular pen. All right, clean that off, and there we have it. All right, hope you enjoyed today's drawing with me. We'll be back again with you another time. All right, stay safe, be well, take care of one another, okay? All right, bye-bye.